Hey everyone, uh, in this video I wanted to go over the CCIE Enterprise Infrastructure Lab Host, I mean sorry, Lab VM. Um, Cisco just went over a webinar on it and I thought I would take the opportunity to put a video out there showing how to install it in VMware. Now, before I go ahead and get into the installation, I just want to go over quickly what the VM is. Um, this is the VM that is used as the hosts in the lab topology. It's not the computer that we're going to sit at when we take the exam. You know, it's not the lab environment. It's not some kind of a VM that has, you know, test topologies or whatever. It's literally the hosts in the topology. And to kind of show you what we're talking about here, this is an example of what Cisco gave us for like, you know, if you want to build your own lab, um, you know, this is the kind of topology you can make. And in this topology, uh, let me get a pen over here. There are quite a few hosts. So up here at the headquarters, you could see up here, there's host one and host two. Uh, down here at branch one, there's host 11, host 12. Uh, host 21, 22, and then again, there's more here and more here. So these hosts are the VMs. So in, in um, CCIE exams past, what they would do is they would use a router as the host. And I'm sure you've done this in your labs before where you kind of like log into a router. There's nothing configured on it besides, you know, an interface. Um, and you could use that router for pings and trace routes. In this case, these hosts are what we're going to use to, again, do pings, trace routes, things like that, but also to log into the vManage GUI or log into DNA Center um, or run a Python script, you know, to get an API of DNA Center, to get an API of vManage, to use the APIs for the CSR 1000, you know, NetConf configuration, things like that. So... I would I would say I wouldn't waste too much time on it because, um, like I said, it's not the lab environment itself. So I wouldn't spend hours and hours going over to make sure you learn all the ins and outs. Instead, what I would do is install it in your lab. And whenever you need to do CCIE automation stuff or, you know, you're, you're looking at the CCIE blueprint, doing vManage API calls, things like that. I would just do it from the host. That way you're just used to it in that manner. Um, and when you get to the lab, that's what you're going to be using it for anyway. So what I have here is VMware. Um, and before I do that, actually, I'm going to post this Cisco Learning Network page in the comments below. Uh, down here, if we scroll down, we have some files which is the uh, manifest file the ofv sorry ovf file and the vmdk uh and in here it shows you kind of you know what cpu ram requirements anyway this is where you're going to want to go to download um this the ovfs and vmdks obviously so in my lab i'm using esxi 600 now, I just want to say that there is a minimum requirement here that you use 600U2 because anything before that doesn't allow us to use the VMware web GUI. I found out that if you're trying to use the vSphere client, which is this client, you will not be able to upload the VM. Uh, there's some kind of a cipher mismatch and things just break. So make sure you upgrade to a version where you could use the web GUI. Um, and what we could do is from the web GUI, we go to virtual machines and we're going to create a new virtual machine. We'll deploy it from an OVF or OVA file. And what we'll do is there's this OVF and the VMDK. So I'm going to click it and I'm going to show you what happens. I'm going to name this uh, VM02. I already have an 01 up going because I don't, you know, I'm not going to sit and waste it for an hour as the hard disk uploads to my uh, host. But 
Let's click next. Honestly, you could just next all the way through this. Next, 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 whatever. I mean, you could change, you know, your networks if you want to. Next, next. I just wanted to show you this here. This error message that I'm getting, line 28, unsupported hardware family, VMX14. This is because my version of VMware is a little old. So I'm using old hardware. You know, I, I got this box off of eBay. It was really cheap. Uh, if you have new hardware, just run the up-to-date version of VMware. But what this shows you, this VMX14, is on this KB article from VMware, it shows you virtual machine hardware versions. And the virtual machine hardware version for 14 works with ESXi 6.7. You could also see if you're using Fusion or Workstation Pro. But anyway, the point is, is that you need to be using 6.7 if you want to just upload this as stock. If you want to be using the version I'm using, which is 6.0, you need to be using 11. So how do I rectify this? Well, all you do is you can right-click the OVF file, edit with Notepad++, and it brings up the actual OVF. Down here, um, line 31 on mine, you could see VMX14. All you're going to do is type in the version that aligns with you know your supported hardware. So again, use this. You know if if you're using um, 6.5, use 13. You know if you're using any of these, use 12. Whatever. So I'm going to use 11. And I change it to 11, file, save as, and save it as, you know, whichever one you want. I'm going to do VM, I already created one with VM1, so that's what I'm going to do there. But this is the, the workaround, you know, if, if you're using an older version like I am. If you're not using an older version, you will not have this problem. You'll just, um, oh, get back there, you can just... You know click finish so I'm gonna go all the way back because I need to create a different OVF file so this is the OVF I created and then also make sure you upload the VMDK so now I could just next through it like I said if you want to change you know the, there's two NICs one is the actual NIC that's going to attach to your network um, your lab network one is with the out of band management so next 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 finish so you can see I'm doing this upload disk one of one and it's at zero percent this is gonna take a very long time so what I did is I already have one this has already been created um, you can see it up and running it has all the stuff for you it has the right vCPUs it has the you know RAM hard disk whatever so I'll just console in And here we go. So this is the VM. It, it's really not much. Like I said, it's just what we're going to be using as an end host. Um, things that will be interesting to us is Firefox, obviously, is if you want to use, um, you know, one of the, the GUIs for either DNA Center or vManage. Uh, we have Wireshark. We have our terminal, which is a Linux terminal. Um, in the webinar, Peter goes over what is actually installed. Um, I created a blog post that, if I scroll down, I could see, you know, I put a lot of the programming tools installed, the networking tools installed, whatever. Um, I'll put this in the description. I'll also put the actual webinar in the description as well, just in case you want to watch the webinar to see what's installed. Um, I'm not going to go through everything that's installed on here for you because I don't think it's that. Um, I don't know, not that good of a use of your time. But anyway, it's pretty much just a Linux, you know, it's a Linux installation. If we do an IP ad, we can see my, my links and what my, you know, IP addresses are. Um, we do have Eclipse, which is an IDE. This one seemed pretty heavy. Uh, it took a while to load when I saw it, you know, I did it before. So my recommendation is to probably not use this on the lab. I would just use... You know, Vim, Nano, um, if you go into here, 
there's you know Joe's own editor. There's a I don't know. There's some text editors in here. It's up to you. And then obviously we have Postman. So again, I, I wouldn't spend too much time learning every single thing installed, every single package installed, whatever, because this isn't the lab environment. You know, this is just an end host. So install a few of them. I have one. I'm installing a second. That's probably all I'm going to install in my lab. And I'm just going to use it in my topology just like, you know, just like here. So this is the installation process for ESXi. Um, it's probably going to be, I mean, it's going to be really easy for you um, if you're using other versions of VMware or other virtualization, you know, Proxmox, whatever. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Um, otherwise, thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one.